Judicial Service Commission has nominated Supreme Court of Appeal Judge President Madisa Maya to become the next Chief Justice of South Africa. Comes after four candidates were interviewed for the post in Santon this week. Zoom Africa senior reporter Jamala Mushaudi has the details. An announcement which signaled history in the making. After much deliberation, the JSC has come to the decision to recommend that the President appoints Justice Mandi Samaya, the President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, to be the next Chief Justice of South Africa. The deliberations process took the entire Saturday afternoon, a signal of the complexity of the considerations and the caliber of candidacy interviewed by the JSC during the four-day process. What made our task difficult was exactly that the candidates were all of a high quality <coughs> and the uniqueness of the pro process, which was also unprecedented. In so far as the president, for the first time ever, nominated more than one candidate to be interviewed by the Judicial Service Commission. Thank you very much. So, what's next? The seaside is we will be writing a report to the president and um, uh, informing uh, the president of our recommendation to him. And, and then the president uh, uh, will, uh, if he hasn't done that already, be consulting the other leaders, uh, the leaders of the other political parties represented in the National Assembly, and he will make his decision uh, uh, as required by the Constitution. And exactly what sets Justice Mandi Samaya apart from Justices Dustin Mlambo, Raymond Zondo, and Mbuiseli Madanga? If you thought the fact that she is a woman is all that set her apart, Justice Maya would have you rethink that point of view. I'm, no, I'm not here simply because I'm a woman. I'm a judge, a, a worthy judge, I think, I've, and I've proven myself over 22 years. And the fact that I'm very important that I'm a woman, of course, but it's just one of the... I'm not good because I'm a woman. I'm just a good woman judge. And Justice Maya impressed when addressing how to tackle delays in Concord judgments. It seems to me that what is needed in that court is good organization and time management, just working smartly and firmly instilling the SCA culture that you do not even leave Bloemfontein at the end of the court term until you have at least prepared a decent draft judgment. Gender parity scored her major points during her interview. You know, there's this big misconception that the judiciary and even the professions are more transformed in terms of gender than they actually are. It is important to clarify that women are still hopelessly underrepresented in all spheres of the law, and it remains critical to close that gap. And it seems Justice Meyer's conviction on the readiness of South Africa for a woman chief justice also got her the nod from the JSC commissioners. I don't think it's a proper question to ask because it implies all sorts of negative things. But short answer is South Africa has always been ready to have a female chief justice. At inception, as you point out, we had strong, capable women in the Constitutional Court. We had Justice Mohoro, we had Justice Oregon, and we, we know them, what they're mm -hmm. capable of. Another key consideration of the JSC was career longevity. At 57 years of age, Justice Meyer still has many years of service to offer the Apex Court. According to Section 176 of the South African Constitution, a constitutional court judge holds office for a non-renewable term of 12 years or until he or she attains the age of 70, whichever occurs first, except where an act of parliament extends the term office of a constitutional court judge. After serving 12 years, Justice Maya will be three years younger than the 70-year retirement limit set out in the Constitution. For Newsroom Africa Channel 405, I'm Dumala Mkhaudi in Johannesburg.
All right, we stay with that story. We're joined now by political analyst Professor Sipo Siepe, as well as Black Business Council CEO Hanki Magdabani. Gentlemen, good evening, and thank you very much for your time and joining us tonight uh, here on In Focus. Firstly, let me begin with you, Hanki. Uh, what's the interest of the Black Business Council in the outcomes uh, of uh, the uh, Chief Justice uh, uh, process? Of course. Firstly, you're a South African citizen, so you're more than uh, allowed to, to weigh in or as, as part of, of the South African citizenship. But I, I, I think, particularly as the, as the Black Business Council, you hold a particular interest in this particular matter. Uh, what is that? Good evening, uh, Tabo, to the viewers, and, and Prof. Uh, the, the, the BPC is guided by, by principle. Uh, uh, so we, we are guided by the imp implementation of legislations that we have uh, in the country. And uh, as such, we, we do have an act called Employment Equity Act of 1998. And, and the, the, the act was passed to ensure that uh, all the sectors of the economy are reflective of the demographics of the country. Uh, and and then the, 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 the act has been has been uh, implemented uh, to, to to some extent uh, in, in in government. If you look at the mostly government departments, the DGs, the, the CEOs of SOCs uh, are mainly run by, by by black people. Uh, it does not necessarily been properly implemented in the private sector because uh, seventy percent of the the CEOs of private sector, private sector companies are still white males. Uh, and, and then I think that's where we come in. We're, we're saying in this country where women are 51% of, of the population, uh, in 28 years of democracy, uh, we were not even counting the other years of apartheid. We've never had a, a female as a chief justice. Uh, we've had males only. Uh, uh, white male, black males, and, and, and so on. Yeah. So we, we, we're saying we, this is the time for, 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 for the country to, to have a female chief justice. Yeah. And, and, and all the candidates that we were, were appointed, we were interviewed according to us, are, are capable. But uh, in an in, in event where, for example, you've got two white males and one black male being interviewed for a position that the Employment Equity uh, Act is very clear that we, we must then give that opportunity to the black male. Uh, in this case, we've got three black males and one black female. And then it should be obvious that the, the, that opportunity should be given to, to, the, to the African female yeah. because the, the African females were like triple oppressed uh, during apartheid. Uh, so we cannot continue as a, as a, democratic, as a democratic country to, to keep on. So are, are you saying your, your, your principal decision is based purely on, on demographics? And if, if, you, if you listen to that clip, uh, Judge Maya herself would really not like to be appointed just because she is uh, the right demographic, right? She says, I'm a good judge, not because I am a woman, but I'm a good judge because I'm a good woman judge. Yes, we, we, we agree with her. She's, 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 uh, she's excellent. Uh, and, and, and she's a very strong woman with all the capabilities. And, and, and as such, she, she should be given the opportunity to, to become the first woman chief justice of the country. And, and that, that, that will, will, will also go a long way in affirming the, 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 the fact that as a country, we we, 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 we we are not paying lip service to, to women empowerment and, and equality. It's important that we need to practice what we say as a country. Yeah. Does this uh, prophecy propose a, 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 a big uh, a challenge for uh, President Ramaphosa in making his decision? You've got the Black, Black Business Council saying, on the matter of principle, uh, we feel you must appoint a female judge. We've got the, the, the commissioners coming out and saying, this is our nominee uh, for, 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 for this position. Um, <laughs> others are coming out and saying, well, they're taking the right of the privilege uh, of the president to choose who's going to be the next uh, chief justice, allow him to, 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 to make this decision. The president uh, put uh, in process 
how this will pan out. He first had a group of uh, experts to look at whether the candidates that uh, were presented to him and those who had showed interest and those who were nominated. He said, among these, can you select a few that would go to the JSC? So he was very much aware of the process. And uh, upon that process being completed, he presented the JSC with four uh, candidates who in their own right have a measure of experience. And uh, the understanding of the JSC was to look at uh, who is the most suitable uh, and who is the candidate that will uh, restore the confidence of the judiciary as a whole, who will, which uh, candidate will deal with the challenges that the judiciary faces, but also the type of uh, chief justice uh, who may not bring controversy into the position. But they, at the same time, there were other issues that we're looking at. Uh, one is a scholarship, one is experience, one is a judicial temperament, and uh, the, the also the recognition that the people have enjoyed. And uh, what emerged is that uh, in all of those, just Maya uh, ticked uh, the box. And most importantly, she also went as far as uh, dealing with uh, the, the naysayers, those who were presenting uh, almost excuses of why she should not be there. One was uh, people saying she's very strong administratively as if uh, intellectually she was weak. She was able to point out something about uh, her scholarship, recognition, the papers that she has written, and also the record that she has broken in the South African law uh, report where two of the articles were published in one volume, something that was uh, only uh, done by another judge and has never been done elsewhere. And also the fact that she has been nominated, nominated by the deans of faculties, almost all. So she was saying, let me deal with the issue of the intellectual leadership and also to argue that this are not, is, uh, these abilities are not visually uh, uh, exclusive that you could be a good administrator, but still be able to command uh, the leadership intellectually. Yeah. And then she was able to deal with the nonsense that said, uh, if she has done so well in the Supreme Court of Appeal, if she leaves that, then the whole place uh, will crumble. And she was able to point out that actually, the people that she leads there are good judges in their own right. Mm -hmm. And also pointed out that some of the people who uh, she was leading have actually moved towards the constitutional court, at least five of them. And uh, then there was also an argument that uh, her move into the position will rattle and unsettle the constitutional court or the constitutional court judges may be unhappy. And she actually pointed out that, no, those are actually a colleague. So that also was found to be wanting. So you found somebody who was very clear. And there were also other questions that were raised about the issues of access, issue of also the recusal that uh, when you are faced with a situation where you might be personal compromised because you are an interested person or you may uh, create a sense of bias, what will you do? And you must understand that these are the issues that people have actually raised with regard to Judge Zondo. Yeah. And her response was very categoric that uh, where there's a whiff or a suggestion of bias or a conflict, uh, it is always better for the judge to be able to err on the side of caution than simply to go full steam. And the, also the issue of how do you deal with the media and also getting into policy debates. And she was able to deal with that, that uh, it is preferable that judges do not get into that because those issues may come to. So on all in all, she was very good. And the closest person to, to that was uh, Judge Matlanga, who also had a formidable intellectual presence, but unfortunately he stumbled at the last moment when the, the question that he has written so positively about uh, was raised uh, to him. Effectively, he failed to extricate himself from the competition when he was asked a simple question, which he could have uh, simply have answered. Unfortunately, the two other judges had other controversies that uh, we can talk about, but uh, people felt that uh, the position of the Chief Justice at this point in time must bring somebody with less controversies right. uh, where there are no questions. If you take Mlambo, Mlambo himself acknowledged that some of the decisions, for instance, uh, 
the decision on uh, the pre protector uh, recommending that uh, the president must not appoint uh, the chair of the commission. Uh, he also indicated that, yes, that had come under heavy criticism because it was almost what you may call judicial activism. But uh, of course, he could defend himself as he said that the issues before me did not raise the issue of separation of powers. But he was, should have been aware of that, that those would be tricky issues. He's the same judge who gave two conflicting and contradictory uh, judgments on the same matter, almost suggesting an element of inconsistency. So there were other issues that could be raised. Zondo, who was asked to recuse himself on the matter, on a personal squabble, he wa that was raised before him because he could have dealt with that matter. So it comes down to the issue of judicial temperament. But there were other issues that were raised about the Zondo. Uh, and we know that because of certain judgments that he had, those precipitated events that ultimately led to the social un unrest where people have actually died. So judges cannot simply stand up and say, I can make a decision because I can. You also need to understand what are the implications of your actions. And especially when you cannot be saying you're absolutely correct. Okay. And even the constitutional court, when it dealt with that matter, indicated that it had to shift. It had to deal with what it calls uh, exceptional circumstances. But the really, the reason why we have a law is to be able to guide so that people are not uh, going to make a finding on the basis of irritation okay, from, or because let, the circumstances are let, so exceptional. So let, let's, take, let, let's take a break. We'll come, we'll, we'll come back and wrap up that thought as well in, in just a moment. Prop Sifo Siepe staying on as well as uh, CEO of the Black Business Council, Khadji Matabane, uh, with us uh, tonight. Uh, let's uh, continue after this break. You tonight here on In Focus on News from Africa, Channel 405 with political analyst Prof. Sifo Siepe, as well as uh, Black Business Council CEO Khadji Matabane. Of course, we're discussing the processes that uh, uh, took place last week in as far as the interview uh, for the Chief Justice of South Africa. There are some organizations, Khadji, who are saying that um, the, the JSC is attempting to take uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa's constitutional power to appoint the, the country's uh, Chief Justice. In fact, some are even challenging uh, the whole particular process, uh, threatening to go to court and so on and so forth. You know the, the debate that is currently uh, on, ongoing. Do you think this is a, a healthy debate, healthy move? Uh, it, should, it, should, it should be pursued? Remember, uh, President Ramaphosa is a, is a process-driven person. And, and, and uh, this is happening for the first time. And uh, the same as, for example, the appointment of the SARS committee. The, 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 the president will have appointed a, a SARS commissioner like the, the previous president did, but he chose to to, to, to follow a process. Uh, and, and, and that process came with a recommendation uh, of the current uh, SARS commissioner, and the president appointed the, the, the commissioner. So even here, the, 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 the president has, has, has given the JSC the, 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 the powers to to advise him, they, they've made a recommendation, and uh, we, we, we've, got, we've got confidence in the president that he'll do the right thing and and, 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 and allow the country to to to, 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 to move forward with a, with, a, with a credible candidate uh, and then to make history as the, as the, the first woman to be appointed uh, so that other females and, 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 and other girl children can then wake up and say, this is possible. Uh, I can be in, in, in South Africa, I can be the best person uh, in South Africa, and I can, I can achieve anything that is there. I can become any position that, that is available uh, professionally. So, so that, that, that for us will, will, will send a very, very good message uh, uh, to South Africa, to, to, to the continent, and also to the world, yeah. that uh, South Africa is extremely, extremely serious when coming to, to the issues of, of yeah. competency and, and the, the issue of equality. Uh, so we cannot just ignore the fact that the judiciary, in the judiciary women are, are underrepresented. Uh, so when, when we have the best amongst them, uh, who, was, who was made a, a, a great impression as the prophet said, uh, uh, let's not lose that opportunity to give her an opportunity to lead. Now, do you, do you think the president should be strictly bound by the recommendations of the JSE? It wouldn't be the first time that presidents uh, deviate from their advisors, uh, even uh, those who do follow due process. 
Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll use his own discretion to do that. Uh, hence, we, we, well, our, our issue is not about the process of appointing the Chief Justice. Our, our issue is just based on the Employment Deputy Act that is there. That when we have uh, candidates that are equally good, let's give the ones who are the one who's coming from the, the group that is underrepresented an opportunity. Prof. Siepe, if the president were to uh, indeed uh, not follow this recommendation of the, the JSC and exercise his constitutional right to, to, to appoint uh, whomever he thinks has been fit, having gone through this particular process, would that uh, put a dent on, on, on whoever comes into that position? Well, I think the president, uh, you, what uh, gamble you are taking. First of all, you have a process that are transparent where South Africans watch uh, people being briefed and some were found to be wanting. And you have a, a clear candidate who uh, uh, comes out above the best. If you start ignoring that, you are not doing, uh, you're not doing a service to the notion of saying, we want to, the, the public and citizens must have confidence in the Chief Justice who has been appointed. So it is something that the president will not take lightly. And of course, the president has a prerogative, but he himself has put in a process that says, uh, I, in as much as I have this prerogative, let the game begin yeah. and let the people watch yeah. and let people contest. And then effectively, when you have somebody winning, then you go and throw by that person. Yeah. So what you have here is, uh, as uh, my colleague Hanki says, that you have somebody who also comes up as better or above the rest, and then you ignore that. And this was something that was very public. And as I said, also, you also want to bring somebody with, who has less controversy. Already the EFF has already indicated that based on what the Judge Zondo had actually said in the commission, uh, or in this uh, JSC commission, and also what he had said when he ruled against Jacob Zuma in another commission. They find a certain inconsistency that they feel propelled to have to approach the JSC to raise issues about the, what they call judicial conduct. So the importance of confidence and is very important in this uh, juncture yeah. where the judiciary is being found also to be wanting. And the judiciary also accepts that, that there they are issues that it must address. Yeah. So you can't then have the best and say, I'm going to ignore it because of the prerogative. That prerogative must also be rational. Yeah, will, uh, that's what I'm to ask you, will it pass the test of rationality if he does in this particular case? I mean, the issue is being raised, for example. Of course, it's a completely different process. The first time that this particular process for Chief Justice has been engaged in uh, in a country in such a manner and in such a, a process. Previously, uh, there are talks that, for example, Judge Museneke would have been a front runner uh, to be a, a Chief Justice. But uh, uh, the president then decided otherwise. Well, I mean, the, the president, I mean, I don't know whether Ch Chief Justice Musenek was a runner, because uh, when you look at the matter that involved uh, uh, Mukunu Queen, and of course there were people who felt that uh, Musenek should have been the next uh, Chief Justice. But the name that was presented to the JSC was one person. And this is why it created all this. What the President Ramaphosa wanted to do was to open up so that they, he's not accused of simply selecting a person of his own making, a person who's going to be looking up to him. So he created that space. But Museneke, that expression was from many people who felt that he, he should have contested. Remember, it was Museneke who chaired the JSC when Mokwe Mokwein was uh, being interviewed. So he was not in the running because his name was not presented. Yeah. And uh, do, do, do you feel this, uh, if, uh, again, uh, the, I, mean, I, I, I don't know what the president is thinking and what the president will, will, will come up with, if, of course, he follows the recommendations of, of, of the JSE, I suppose there will be no contestation of this particular issue and maybe being taken to court. But if he does it, do you think there will be people who will be willing to challenge him in court on the rationality of his decision? Well, I mean, we are a very litigious society. Those with money uh, will try to even stop this process, as some have already 
indicated that they might want to consider. The, what we need to understand that in the end, the president will look at uh, the entirety of the process, the recommendation, and also some of the objections that may come in. Because there are some people who raise that there were political issues that were raised, questions that should have been raised. But they're on the four issues. Each candidate to us also measured on the four issues, aside from the issues that have to do with Roma. It was whether scholastically they, uh, they have excelled, whether in terms of experience that they've excelled, in terms of judicial temperament, whether they, uh, they've ex excelled, in terms of uh, ju uh, judges getting involved or getting involved in political debates. They, all of them provided uh, responses, and some responses were found to be wanting. And uh, hence, uh, the Judicial Service Commission, after considering all that, those main four main issues, they decided that, uh, yes, there may have been one or two issues that uh, were problematic that led to the sparks flying, but on the whole, that did not deter us from coming to a position that uh, we will give the president one name because we're so convinced. But if they doubted, they would have presented the president with two names. But they, it's up to the president to say, given the entirety of the process, what decision I make, because uh, he has the constitutional prerogative. But uh, I think he has adopted this also to be rational about it. I appreciate your time, gentlemen, and thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight here on InfoBee.